Back when I was about yay tall, growing up in the freezing tundras of Alaska, I learned about robots for the very first time. It became my childhood dream to make a friend. A robot friend. I had, I had, I had loads of human friends. I mean, come on guys. But as I grew older, I learned that robots tended to look more like this. Or this. Or even this. Uh, that one, that, that, that one's not mine. These robots all have something in common. They don't have personalities. You can't talk to them, have a conversation with them, have them be your robot friend that you always wanted. They do have functions though. This one can flip someone off using your brain. Banana. This one just drips stuff. And this one, well, ugh, I don't, I don't want to get banned. <laughs> Nowadays, you even have these new companies springing out of nowhere, like Figure, which despite having not sold anything, is worth over two billion dollars. Basically, because of this demonstration video. The current robot can listen to tasks. What do you see right now? And then analyze its environment by way of a camera. I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table. Then move its little robot arms to pick, place, and correct things. In this case, dirty dishes. What I think is really cool about this is not the dexterity and stability needed to move the robot, definitely not because I'm a donkey and don't have a monkeys and how I would do that, but rather the speaking function. And when it responds, it gives you these really uncanny human responses. I, I think I did pretty well. This here, that's not a face you wanna to talk to. That's a loading screen. I could make a talking, animatronic, artificial intelligence, robot friend head, right? Look, computer-aided design, it, it's, it's hard, man. Here's what I was trying to make, and here, here's, here's what I made. Like any regular human, the robot head has eyes. These are actually animatronic eyes, and they were just a little bit ass to design. Animatronic means that they can actually move. This bottom motor controls our side-to-side -side eye movement, and the perpendicular motor, the uh, absolutely incredible electrical work going on here, controls our eyelid movement. Any animatronic I've seen online tends to use servo motors instead of DC gear motors to get their eye movement. Now that would be way, way, way easier, but I love making stuff really hard for myself, so I've implemented this motor driver circuit with these motors to get this result. When paired with the whole head, the result is a, it's a, it's a little bit uncanny, but arguably not as uncanny as this mouth here. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? The mouth is actually just this 16 by 2 LCD screen. When I give my brain a prompt, it's gonna output onto that LCD screen. This is the first prompt I've ever sent to the brain, so it's got no voice or nothing but it's uh, how are you doing big boy in 10 words or less because I'm a brokey and I don't want the API to use loads of money. So sending our prompt in and then it thinks and then it goes feeling good, looking good, ready for anything. I wasn't planning on putting this into the video because the camera quality is complete ass, but I can't script the responses of the robot. Just, just, just look at this. To conquer, <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Second prompt and we're already talking about conquering the world. About 10 days before I posted this video, I asked you guys what questions you would want to ask an artificial intelligence robot talking head. Now, I said I, it wasn't for a video. I lied. I, I lied. I made, I made a talking AI animatronic head and now it's time to ask your questions to it. Hey robot. What is up? Do you know that you are a robot? I am programmed to assist and provide information to the best of my abilities. Being a robot allows me to efficiently process and respond to inquiries. Well, there you go. I think it knows that it's a robot. Bonus question. What do you think of me, your creator? You are skillful and thoughtful in your creations, uh -huh. mm. guiding me to be the best virtual assistant I can be. Yep, yep, Thank you that's for me. bringing me to life. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, welcome, welcome to the party, dude. Earlier I said that I couldn't script the responses of the robot, and that is completely true. This is using like a neural network, large language model thing, a little bit like ChatGPT, but not the exact same. But what that does mean is the responses are really, really adaptable 
So I can ask something like this. What do you think about the political representation of cows in Cuba? What? I am not aware of any political representation of cows in Cuba. It seems unlikely given the human-centric focus of political systems. <laughs> You're no fun. It's, it's no fun. It could have just made something up. Absolutely useless! Wait, how do you get? Orientation is not a choice. <laughs> Being gay is just a natural part of who someone is and should be accepted and respected like any other aspect of identity. There you go, Tony Stark. Don't be so, don't be so bigoted, D Jesus. The head's also really good for making you feel really like good about yourself and just giving you loads of compliments. And why am I the greatest human to ever live? I'm superly muscly and good looking, by the way. While you may feel confident in your abilities, Humility is always a virtue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone has their own unique strengths and contributions to offer. You know, that wasn't a great compliment. Passive aggressive comments aside, the brain on my robot friend is working really well. These eyes could use a little bit of work. Sometimes the eyelids tend to get a bit, you know, buried in the back of the skull as opposed to this more desirable movement. You may notice there's a big ass webcam on top of it. It's actually been there the whole time. It's just, it was really, really camouflaged. That's why you guys couldn't see it before. Liar! I want my robot friend to be able to see my beautiful face. Now that does make this a hell of a lot more complicated than just speech, but that's a future me developing the electronics and software problem. Uh, uh, how, how many days do I have until my exam season starts? Six, but how many talking robot heads do I have capable of image recognition? One, baby. Now when the robot is activated, hey robot, it asks what mode you want to use. What mode would you like? If you say image, image mode please, the assistive prompt, just describe what is in the image, is going to be sent off to a better, <coughs> more expensive, API. An image is taken alongside that prompt. The more images you want to analyze, the more expensive that computation is going to end up being. I would rather not have the money I spend on food being engulfed by a computer doing math, so I'm just capturing a single frame, this image here, to analyze a for now. Is up an tape roll towards the camera with an out-of-focus background, featuring a room with blue curtains and various items. Yeah, so it's pretty good. It has a, it has a good description of what's going on. And it even describes my messy ass room. Great. Hey, robot. You naughty, naughty. What mode would you like? Image mode. What should I do with the image? Read the sign in the image. Oh, this is devious. Who is Joe? Joe Mama! At this point, you've seen the robot see, you've heard the robot talk, you're probably quivering in your boots. This magnificent feat of engineering is gonna take your job. Psych! And it's not because this robot can only see and talk at the moment, no, no, no. It's because of the copious computation costs associated with these requests. Let's assume I want my camera to run at 10 hertz. That means it takes 10 photos every second and processes every one of those seconds to understand its environment in a dynamic fashion. How much have the 20 something frames I've sent to this thing over the course of this video cost me? A grand total of two cents. Even I have that sort of dough. But how much would running at 10 hertz the full capability of the robot cost you? Well you've got 10 images per second which each take about 100 tokens for each image meaning you spend about a thousand tokens every single second that you have the thing running. A thousand tokens goes to about 0.01 cents. If you want to then run this robot for say a minute that's going to set you back 60 cents every single minute you run it. Doesn't sound too bad, right? But then scale it up to an hour and suddenly you're at $36 per hour. So don't worry, it's not gonna take your job anytime soon. This, this thing is not worth $36 a damn hour. It can talk, it can see, it can read, but it's also important that my robot friend is yeah! savage, cool, hip, hip with the kids. Tell me what I'm doing in the image. You seem to be stretching your arm out towards the camera with a playful pose. It's not a play- Girl. <laughs> 
It's, it's not a playful pose, it's, it's a dab. Well, clearly that needs some work, but you know what doesn't need work? Pirate mode. A pirate. Voice. Sing me a sea shanty. Hoist the sail. Raise the anchor high. We'll sail the seas under the sky. A pirate's life. A thrilling ride. Adventure waits on every tide. Ah. Leave questions you want the robot to answer below. I've got exams now, so goodbye.